Hi everyone, this is Pastor Josh here for your midweek message. And uh, this week we're going to finish up Beatitudes. So we're going to be in Matthew 5. Um, and uh, last week, if you remember, we talked a little bit about vision and the first part of the Beatitudes, about Jesus the teacher. And uh, this week we're going to talk about Jesus the lawyer. I know that's kind of an interesting concept. People, uh, some people, not all people, but many people, um, have a negative impression of lawyers. And, um, you know, especially in this current political climate, uh, lawyers are kind of all over the place. We're in a very litigious society. And so um, so Jesus being a lawyer is an interesting concept. Um, but as being a rabbi, uh, part of his duty was to uh, work to defend and interpret the law. And, uh, and so the text for this week is Matthew 5, uh, I think in thir- starting in verse 13. And it talks about salt, and uh, and when salt loses its saltiness, you throw it out. And then it talks about um, when you light a candle or light a lamp, uh, you don't stick it under a bush, you put it on a lampstand. And um, talking about your li- let your light shine before men. And then Jesus goes on to talk about the law, and he says that the law is uh, none, nothing from the law is ever going to be taken away. That neither there a jot nor a tittle. If you read the NIV or the NRSV, it says a letter or a stroke of a letter uh, will be removed uh, until the law has been completely fulfilled, and that your righteousness has to exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees um, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. And so um, that's what I kind of want to talk about today was the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. See, one of the things that we struggle with in Christianity is the law um, as, as a minister. Um, and as I grew up as a very conservative Baptist, um, I was told that there was a list of things that I needed to do, that I needed to be a good person and I needed to not steal and not cheat and, not, you know, the Ten Commandments on steroids. And uh, I never curse, and I never, you know, I would be a good little boy. And as I grew in my faith, I realized that that's how we start. And there's nothing wrong with starting with this laundry list of things, of do's and don'ts. But at some point, the law has to become more, that our faith has to become more than a, than a to-do list, than a checklist, um, which is hard because for ministers, it's easy. If I just tell you as a parishioner, hey, here's the laundry list of things you do and don't do, and then just come back to me next week, and I'll absolve you of your sins, or I'll make you feel better, or hey, God loves you, and you're great people. Um, It doesn't help you grow. And so, because what Christ is really talking about, this new way that Christ is putting about, is a a relationship. Um, And relationships are messy. Um, And so, when you have a relationship with someone, you can't really have a relationship if it's just do these things, don't do these things. Um, you have to know people. You have to have, you know, conversation. You have to have interaction. Um, you have to grow with people. And you have you realize that over time, that laundry list of rules, though important, um, there's a spirit to them. You know, we understand that when we, you know, we, sh- we shouldn't steal. But if you're starving, is it okay? It, you shouldn't kill people, but if you're trying to defend your own life, does that make a difference? Um, you go, well, that, that's totally different, Josh. Well, it's still taking a life. Life is being taken. Um, you know, capital punishment. We could we could talk about that. Someone who's taken a life, do we believe an eye for an eye? Um, you know, there's there's lots of ways to, to, to go with that. Um, and Jesus goes a step further. He says that if you have thought about it, if you have... Um, if you have thought about killing someone or committing adultery, or if you've thought about um, uh, stealing, then you have you've done the act, and it it troubles us because what what Christ is doing is is telling us that we as a people need to be not better people, but we need to be greater people, that we need to understand and and have the Scripture become a part of us, that. The ethics and norms of the day have to be something that we interpret and that there has to be a way that we follow, that there's a code or ethic or more that, that becomes intrinsically part of who we are. And that's how our righteousness grows. Not because we become, oh, I can keep all these rules. I can keep 135. Well, I can keep 136. That doesn't matter. 
what matters is is that you inherently know what is good and bad you inherently know what is the way of christ you inherently know what brings you closer to god and helps you find the divine and you help others find that divinity in the world and that's much harder to do that is a much more difficult faith but it's a more genuine faith and it is a faith that that i think is far more meaningful and so we could we could talk left and right about what's right or what's wrong, but we learn over time that what's right or wrong is 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 a moving target. Um, what's right and wrong for one group of people at one time in one generation is very different. Um, and so how do we as a people group learn what is righteousness? What do we learn about what is the right thing to do? And I think that over time it's about finding that that core of who Christ is and letting faith work on us and change us and make us not, again, not good people, but making us people of faith with that deep center and that abiding love that allows us to show grace, to show humility, to be benevolent, um, to love our neighbor as ourself. So I hope that helps this week and uh, I'll see you on Sunday.